Scream Queens Season 1, Episode 10. This episode is called Black Friday. So, thoughts? So, yeah, another episode I absolutely loved. Um, thoughts? Bleh, spoilers for these first... Ep yeah, the, the episodes up to and including this one. I really, really love Chanel explaining why she loves Black Friday. You know, she's... It's, it's the... After Chanel Halloween, it is the very best holiday because, you know, she bribes this guy who sells weed at the harbor and, you know, into letting her in half an hour early. So they're all standing there, ham you know, banging on the glass, begging to be let in, and she's in there, you know, and she also loves getting really crappy gifts for the, the other girl, the other Chanel's. And <laughs> I really like hearing Zayde talk about Gigi's head. That's a weird looking turkey. Oh, it's a head. Oh, it smells delicious. That's how it starts. And the, the, um, let's see. Yeah, Chanel number one and Dean Munch yet again have you know, conflict, power struggle. So the cop, um, Detective Chisholm has been fired, along with Chief of Police, everyone, you know, which, yeah, they're really bad at their jobs, evidently. And then you get the, the wonderful line, which I think is sadly absolutely true. You know, a lot of these cops, they just, they get all backed up inside if they don't crack a few skulls every day. <laughs> Chanel, I do not understand why you take us out and buy us these crappy presents and then ruin the surprise. <laughs> why would you want... Because it's Christmas. <laughs> Have I said recently how much I love Chanel number no. five? Because it's a lot. Like she's just she's so great. Just the yeah. I I love her freak out later this episode about ones and f oh, zeros and fours. And <laughs> instead of buying crappy presents, she's gonna buy them matching pink jeeps. Which yeah. Let's see and and yeah, so they go to the mall and it's deserted and it's this kind of thing, you know. A deserted mall is legitimately a very scary place. I, I imagine I haven't been, but that's and and it's very kind of of right now kind of thing, you know. So so that's a great and yeah, the red devil shows up and. It's just me and you, and she of course, of course, she takes an arrow. Like, what, what, does, what did you think was gonna happen? She's, of course, he's gonna, he's, he's got a crossbow. He's aiming. Of course, he's gonna shoot you. It's just, I, I love how completely, like, she's just, it's, it's, yeah. And and then Denise shows up. She is now the chief of police, and you know she tries to spin the gun on her face, which you know that's the like. That that really has like this childlike. Who doesn't? A lot of us more immature souls would, if we actually got our hands on a gun, we would try to spin it. You know, it's just ow, that actually hurts. Just yeah. And it's also like um, maybe don't do that with a loaded gun, in front of people. Like there's so many. Such bad decisions going into that one, just a couple of seconds of, of spinning the gun on her finger. And, yeah, you know, the, the Red Devil shoots the, the other cop, and Denise is like, why didn't I shoot him? I should have shot him. <laughs> Which is just, like, there's so many slasher movies. You could be like, what, what are you doing? Just do the thing. The killer's right there. You know that's the killer. You have a weapon. You know, just, yeah. And they decide that the the Chanel's all decide they're going to kill Dean Munch. And I love this bonding moment between Chanel number one and Grace, where they both at the same time say, 
I think we should poison her. I was kind of surprised that neither of them said jinx, but yeah. And the the <laughs> we we go to another meeting of the Dicky Dollar Scholars Club. And you know he's yet again. I know I said it before, but I love that the the you know uh, hammer bangy thing is is not a hammer, but like the head of of a golf club, if if that's what you call it. Just you know, so coldest meeting, you know, and and cut cut to to another angle, and it's like literally not a single other member of the scholars club is present. You know, it's just Chad Radwell and Pete who is. Decidedly not one of the one of the members. Oh, Pete, hold on. We need to hear Earl Grey give last meeting's minutes. Oh right, he's dead. Like for a second, I was like, oh, how long is he gonna push? Is he just gonna be standing there like? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep going, keep going. And then we have the yeah. We we learn why Pete is there. Boon willed all this stuff, and I love how he's still dead gay Boon. You know, just, like I get the dead part, I get the Boon part. Why do you still care that he's gay? He's dead. He's. It's in no way is it gonna affect anything. Just it's it's amazing, and I, it, it is such a great because you know, Chad Radwell, obviously conservative. Conservatives are obsessed with what people do with their genitalia. And <laughs> I love that, you know, were you two lovers? No, he was my source. You know, he was the other kind of deep throat. He was my deep throat. How does, how does Diego Bonetta play, playing Pete Martinez, how does he get that line out and not crack up? Your dead gay friend, he was my deep throat. And and the this, this thing um, you know it, right we yeah we get flashback to when he failed to to pledge you know he did, he did such a, a bad job he doesn't have any John Mayer albums which okay considering that he his ab game is super weak his body is not a wonderful hint <laughs> amazing and then you know it's like okay. You should you should join the the Dicky Dollar Scholars Club. Any guy who is a friend or possible lover of my friend Dead Gay Boone is welcome. Just and and then you know he walks away. You know you're gonna get murdered, murdered to death. And I love when when you know Chanel and Grace are at Dean Munch's and you know. Thank you for inviting us into your hideously furnished home. Wow. And, you know, yeah, they're going to talk to her about feminism. And I love how, you know, like, the, the, um, I think, yeah, it's, it's Grace who says something that, you know, Munch says, that's, that's not feminism, even remotely. And we're just, that's it. We don't know what feminism is. So we need you to teach us. And, you know, the, how did you know apple cider was my favorite? Um, and then, you know, we go back and they're cyber stalking her. And I, I guess it was like Facebook that they saw just, yeah. Where do you have puffer fish venom? From my puffer fish. <laughs> and she drinks like a lot of, of the, you know, and she's like, <gasps> And then she burps. It's just wow. And yeah, she manages to drink the entire thing and not die. And now Grace has to write ten thousand words on what was it nineteen fifteen? You know, feminism through the mil militant suffragette to nineteen fifteen. This thing, it just yeah. And Pete lets slip that maybe the Red Devil isn't so bad. And <laughs> I I love the the that Grace says you know we can have sex after we kill Dean Munch you know just yeah that's 
And, you know, they're like, no, she, Dean Munch was not successfully poisoned. We asked, and nobody had, admit, had been admitted to, you know, except one guy who, got a, who had to have a Lego removed from his butt. It was Chad Radwell. He explained to the nurse that normally he does his nude yoga in the evening right be, you know, before setting up an army of Lego to guard him while he sleeps. But this time he, he did it the other way around, ended up with a Jack Skellington up the butt. And just, that is the strangest explanation I've ever heard for, for anything. And they kick out Grace because she no longer wants to kill Dean Munch. What are you saying? A few hours ago, you were like, let's kill the bitch. And, you know, even Zayde stays. And it's like, you know, you can't kick me out. That's against the rules. Anyone all in favor of changing the rules so we can kick her out? <laughs> I do believe, you know, that this is why you, like... Just, yeah, amazing. And we learned that Gigi was not the mother of the of the twin. Or, 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 she wasn't the adoptive mother of, you know, yeah. She didn't take care of the, the kids. You know, that was her sister for, you know, and, and then she went, she was admitted after her sister committed suicide and Grace says wow dad you sure can pick him wow just yeah I, I didn't really know anything about her but she liked my playlists she liked my playlists <laughs> just wow and the the right and also the thing about you know right the the you know I, I know I'm gonna sound like a dork but you know Today, having a boyfriend, there are expectations, and she, you know, she keeps talking as her father's like, "No, don't want to hear it." Shh. Please stop. You know, I do not want to hear about my daughter having sex. You know, just yeah. I wish your mother was here. Well, not your mother, because she would have said to fake being pregnant and then get, you know, to to get a and then get a bunch of pregnancy. Yeah, pregnancy pills, then have sex with his friends to make him jealous. It's, you know. And <laughs> they take Dean Munch to a cryo sauna, which is just such an amazing, like, I, I love that. I love the idea of a cryo sauna, and it's, you know, age before beauty. You are about to kill her. She's going to be out of your lives. You still can't help but insult her. See you on the other side. And it's, the, you know, because that's such a great, like, you know, she's joking that, oh, it's like, it's, you know, it's going to completely change kind of thing. But, you know, that's on the other side. Also, like, oh, when we're dead, because I'm about to die kind of thing. Just, yeah. And, yeah, the, you know, she'll be dead in ten minutes, and then, you know, time skip. Why are we not hearing any screaming? Why doesn't she try to open, why doesn't she try to open the door? Um, because she's frozen. If she tried it, her arm would snap off. You need to watch a little movie called Terminator. And, just, you know, somehow she sort of, Somehow Palpatine returned. Somehow she survived, you know, and she still got the the two fingers up. Which I'm, I'm not entirely like. Is is that like victory? Is it like I want to use scissors? Can you get me some? Is it that like Star Wars: Empire Strikes Back is the best movie ever? Is it I'm not quite ready for the shocker? I I just I'm I'm not entirely sure of what it means in the, in the given circumstance, and. The, the, yeah, I, I love the, uh, the reaction also that, you know, and, and the thing with, you know, body bag, sure, and it's, it's pink. Well, <laughs> I know you have a theme going here, but I think that might be a decent time to go with the original color. 
and yeah, you know, someone calls Pete, and he says, "Never call again." And we see, you know, the red. He's in front of the Red Devil costume. I really love the explanations of how Dean Munch survived. You know, Chanel number five suggests maybe it's like that documentary, Teen Wolf. Hester suggests she's like Rasputin and then goes through and and this you know for a show that has a lot of exaggerations death of Rasputin no look it up that's that actually happened it's it's wild and yeah she gets them matching smartphones and then you know they fail to to show up because they're they're badgering this poor employee's like I don't even know what you're asking me to do here. Just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fit a size zero, but I, I'm not gonna leave the store with size fours. I just want, you know, some, some sexy, some, some underwear that fits me of the sexy, sex, sexy lingerie variety that says size zero and not size four. I really just. I, I mean, I already really liked Abigail Breslin before this, but she's just, she's so funny on this show. And... Why are we alone by the pool? And why are you carrying a... You know, why did you bring a bag that clearly has chains in it? S&M. Um, I thought we could talk about the history of S&M in, in feminism. And... Unsurprisingly, Dean Munch does have a lot to say on the subject. That's 100%. Yeah, I'm. I, I wish I was surprised. And yeah, of course, you know, it does not. They do. You know, she does not succeed in getting Dean Munch into the the the, the pool. And yeah, so she's gonna write. The missive to end all misses to the rest of the sorority. And yeah, now Grace is saying yes to sex, and Pete is saying no. I don't want your f first time to be with a murderer. And we end, of course, very, very, you know, excited to see. I can't help but wonder if he's not going to confess to being the murderer, but rather admit that he accidentally got someone, or, you know, maybe it's like that time where, you know, Flanders was, was saying, I'm a murderer, I'm a murderer, and then it turns out, you know, very different circumstances than we thought, I suppose I won't spoil that episode for anyone who hasn't watched it, but, but yeah, I can't help but wonder if that's going to be the case, but, but yeah, you know, Pete could be the killer. Everyone on the show, literally everyone, like, I, yeah, I would be like, yeah, you know what? There's been a lot of red flags for that character, but yeah, um, yeah, it was it was nice to see Roger Dodger and Caulfield again, uh, and Earl Grey, of course, uh, you know, in the in the flashback to the the Dicky Dodger, Dicky Dollar uh, scholar, yeah. Um, I think that is everything that I had to say. Yeah, the, the, um, yeah, really excited to see what the, what is next. So, yeah, with that said, stay screaming.